So the next talk is um, on the sort of same note that Quan Quan, uh, same same sort of um, uh, use case, um, improving hobby caches using zone storage or zone uh, block devices. And uh, mm, this is like I'm very excited because everyone has been looking into like LSM tree based stores for the last three years. Everyone started doing that. You know, did a CNS drive and just showing that this works. But we can do this for caching. We can do good things with CNS for caching as well. And uh, this is more of a talk like presenting the use case and, and see if we can work together on, on, on making this happen um, together. So what is the use case here? Well, web services rely on caching at nearly every layer of the system architecture. Uh, this quote is from a great paper written by Sarah McAllister um, uh, on, on something called Kangaroo. Uh, this is an improvement to, to Cashlib. Well, worth a read if you, uh, you're interested in this. And caching is great, um, and DRAM is really a, a good way to store um, cache data, but it is, is expensive, and SSDs offer a good alternative or, or complement to, to DRAM. But these sort of work, workloads um, result in a lot of write amplification, especially for small objects. And writes need to be limited to limit where, right? If we just pound the, the drive with, with writes, it's going to wear out really, really soon, and write amplification is just going to make that worse. And uh, to get good performance, good tail latencies, um, a lot of open provisioning is used to mitigate um, write application. So if you add over provisioning on the user side, if you just don't use uh, all of the drive's capacity, um, you, you, you mitigate the, the problems that occur through garbage collection on, on normal drives. So up to half of the drive can be reserved just to get decent performance. So um, the, the question I'm asking now is, uh, can we use um, some namespaces to lower uh, write amplification? If you do that, we can have larger caches um, and make better use of the media. And you be able to store more cache data and make things faster for everyone. Can I ask you a question? Yep. Um, sorry, my question was with regard to what you said earlier, that you should leave some amount of space free uh, um, to avoid like garbage collection. Um, you cannot completely avoid garbage collection, correct, right? Because you no, can no, have half of the drive full, and if you keep overwriting that, you're going to... I mean, you can't completely avoid it on conventional drive. We can make it the problem smaller. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, so what, what we've been studying, um, uh, an implementation of, of, of caching, hybrid um, DRAM and, and flash caching. Um, uh, and the, what we've been looking into is cachelib that Meta uses to, um, to, to cache things in, in the web services. And cachelib scales to billions of small objects and supports a wide range of use cases. And um, the, the sort of defining features as, as I see it is um, that it separates large and small objects. So yeah, the sort of breaking point is 2K. So it stores them in, on different storage backends. And it uses key hashes to map small objects to reduce DDR. So they, you can't save um, a, a pointer to flash for all of these small objects. If you have that many objects, it's going to be a huge DDR overhead um, uh, to keep track of all of them. So they hash them and map them to uh, a block on, on raw flash. So what what is it? What are the challenges, opportunities here? If we look at Cashly as an example, well. The, the large objects are written out sequentially to big flash segments. Sounds nice and juicy for CNS, right? And segments can be reclaimed round robin. Like, oh, we don't need to do much garbage collection. This is a great fit for CNS. And AJ Joshi, part of our team, tried it out. 
mapped out um, the large objects uh, to uh, to zones, and he got great performance. But it's basically a sequential <laughs> workload, and conventional drives are pretty good at that too. So this is not like a huge performance gain. Um, we could see some things that get better with uh, with CNS, but um, uh, it's not, not it's not like a, a killer app for it. We need to do small objects as well, and because uh, we have hash function from key to uh, block address, we basically get random block size writes uh, for the for the small objects when they're stored, and that hurts. Like anyone who's tried to dis design an FTL knows that you can't really optimize for random block size writes. That's very difficult. So what can we do? Can we can we sort of ease the uh, requirement somehow? Well, I have a sketch for a solution. Um, large objects, I say, it's easy. Map segments to zones, do a zone reset before reuse. And yeah, we've tested this. This seems to work fine. Um, the small objects, that's an, not an easy solution for that. But we could optimize garbage collection for caching because um, unlike normal um, block devices, uh, a block device specifically designed for caching could actually forget things. I mean, a cache is not a persistent thing. So we can actually selectively forget things if we, if we think that will make a better system solution. Um, so we could invalidate like the coldest blocks instead of relocating them. And that would result in a cache miss uh, for, for cache lib, but cache misses are okay, as long as uh, uh, we can compensate that by having a larger cache. And coal here, we can have the different definitions for. It could be the oldest, like how old, how long it took to, um, how long uh, since it was written, like the coldest thing could be that the, we were, that has the uh, sort of uh, that yeah that was written the furthest away in time, or it could be the one that was read the least. So we can do this in different ways. Yeah. Sorry, uh, a previous slide. I'm trying to understand. Um, yeah. Um, so. If you're invalidating the um, in, in the small objects there, mm -hmm. um, if you're invalidating the cold blocks, doesn't that, in a sense, create a problem uh, that you actually have to do garbage collection? Like if you have holes, maybe, uh, maybe I'm not understanding something. I, I, here. I, I have like a suggestion how you could implement this in a super simple way. So maybe that will help. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, how could we like implement this? We could implement this as uh, uh, some sort of block device, uh, an FTL somewhere. Uh, we could either do it in CacheLib and integrate it with the caching policies and do uh, like a full integration in there, but that might be messy and harder upstream and would not like fit into other cache engines, right? So we could try out implementing a separate cache optimized FTL. Uh, maybe as a user space library, like what you did, uh, Adam, with uh, FlexAlloc, or we have we have a uBlock now. This is a user space block devices that can have knobs and, and we could like play with different parameters. That would be cool. Um, that was just in, in, introduced in the kernel, um, but uh, we could make sure that works, works with some block devices and, and play with that. Or we do it in the kernel, like in device map layer or as a... There's DM cache and vcache already there. You just need to add don't support there. Yeah, and maybe like knobs to to make it work for, for cache. Yeah, so the thing is that that would also, like it will take longer time to, to get it in, right? So it might make sense to experiment it with it in user space and, and then move it into the kernel. There are many ways to do this. Um, I would love a discussion around that uh, later on. So how could we implement this? I mean, is this complicated to do? 
Well, we can try different approaches and different approaches could make sense for different caching use cases. What, what the simplest approach I could imagine was that we would just write out user blocks round robin. So we would just uh, map out uh, uh, the uh, small objects block size right to uh, to a zone and fill up one zone at a time. And once we have filled up a zone, if we fill up all of the zones, we have to do reclaim. Uh, we start throwing stuff out uh, that we wrote in the beginning. So that was further away, most further away in time. So uh, uh, and assuming that hit ratio decreases with time, uh, we can throw that away without. Uh, uh, getting uh, uh, too much hits on, on, our, on our hit ratio. ratio. And big objects can be evicted roughly this, this way. Uh, so it might make sense as a policy. At least it's simple. Uh, and yeah, I say it might work. We have to try it through some decent workflows, right? Uh, and of course, we can do something much more advanced, like counting reads per block. And uh, if we have a very uh, a block that has been read a lot, we should probably keep it and do a bit of garbage collection and, and, and just relocate that. So there are a lot of like uh, fun things to play with. And it, this is easier to play with than a whole file system. So I think we could actually have some fun there. Pretty, pretty fast. Yeah, so who are you guys are interested in improving SSD caching? Like, is that a use case you've been thinking of? We've seen this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And what what type of workloads do you think you can we can optimize for? Like, um, if we're gonna do something common, we have to have some way of testing it and benchmarking it, and then we have to have a, some sort of synthetic benchmarks that would actually reflect what would be in the in the wild, right? There's some workloads in in Cashlib, uh, but uh, I mean. That's just for cash lib. I had a quick question. I I kind of missed where this is um, ZNS specific, right? You could probably do this on a conventional namespace drive. I think. Yeah, it could work on conventional namespace yeah. as well. But I think we can we can get more capacity to play with. And, sure. Yeah. And and I think we can also get better uh, quality of service. Uh, on on, uh, on CNS Could you talk a bit about the quality of service piece? I, I, I don't quite follow how you would get better QoS. Yeah, OK. Uh, uh, so uh, we can, I mean, we, we basically have better control over when things get reset. So we can make sure that um, we do resets uh, uh, in a way that uh, doesn't disturb uh, the right so basically, we have, we have a bit more, more finely grained control, but yeah. yeah. Okay, so maybe it's not like a giant. It's not a gigantic thing, right? So it's 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 a small improvement, right? Yeah. So I'm interested in improving SSD caching, and I have request recently in my company to optimize traffic server. Or traffic server from Apache. Okay. So it's cache architecture. So it's one of the potential use Okay. Cases. Okay. Cool. So we can continue. <laughs> yeah. Traffic server. So I, I have another uh, feeling about that, uh, this design. So have you um, considered about the kind of, you know, storage tiering saying you can configure some small capacity with SLC oh. for, to deal with such a small oh, objects? Yeah, okay. So we could do that. Yeah. <laughs> that, no, I didn't think of that. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's an interesting thing. Um, just contrasting this with the talk you just gave, I imagine with the previous set of drives, because everything had to be persistent, if you had a capacity change, you'd probably just fail upwards. Um, but here, you could actually survive that, right? Did you add any mechanisms to do that? 
And could you talk about that? Maybe? Look, and no, I haven't. This is this is just at the idea stage, right? Okay. Okay. So this is just throwing it out there. Uh, if it makes sense to people, we can start doing something, right, and cooperate on it. That, that that's where it is. How about uh, cash in the FTL? Caching in the FTL itself. Is that, would that be something, or like, no, you're completely oh. out of, <laughs> you're completely crazy. All right, caching. But what you would like to cash yeah. in FTL? I don't know, like. What I mean is like, uh, okay, so you're you're discussing like, okay, maybe we can do this uh, in uh, either the kernel, uh, user space, or whatever. And I'm like, ah, oh, maybe we can also just like go oh, down there. All right, and just... go. Okay, go full full on, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean that that's also. I mean potentially, you could do a do a, a drive that does that, right? But it, you need to do the homework and make sure it works first. And uh, the thing is, we with CNS, we can experiment with this without having to write firmware, right? Yeah, I guess your point is like uh, CNS provides you the ability to kind of like do your own little FTL. Yeah, yeah. right. And and have uh, like knobs that is specific for your use case. It's hard to provide all those knobs in, inside a conventional drive with maybe some cache optimizations, right? Mm -hmm. And everyone can do their own, right? And optimize for their production workloads without having to, to order a new firmware, right? Sorry, can I have another question? So one of the one of the situations or the issues that I run into when I when I do all these things is a, a proper workloads, yes. and uh, <laughs> and uh, you you say that uh, Cashlib has like its own little thing, but uh, it's always very um, it's always very uh, artificial. Yeah. How would you maybe uh, solve this? I'm also like dreaming, right? Thinking and see. I don't know. Uh, something from uh, Cashlib or something from other caching uh, infrastructures? I mean, that's why we, we it's great, so great to have Concron here who, who works with production workloads. He can give the input, right? And we can all help making it work. Uh, and we can all try to test it and benchmark it in our environment. It's like everything else that is shared. How we do, do stuff, right? Yeah, I think uh, participation incentivizes more people to join, right? Basically what you're saying, right? The, if, if we, multiple vendors are out there, hey, we ran this, we saw this, and then, uh, you know, people providing workloads, like, that would be like the dream, right? Yeah, right. yeah, <laughs> but at least you can get the testing, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, they might not get the workload, that's hard, right? But maybe you can get good, good models of it, right? Yeah, the model, yeah, exactly, yeah, I mean, right, it, yeah. I mean, in, in Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. 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 something, right? That's the most important I mean, thing. Cashlib has testing, right? Mm -hmm. But but it's not, not it's not production workloads right right off the bat. Maybe I think there's some data that you can get that is like maybe I would trace like. Um, it, it reminds uh, me, reminds me of Rocks DB, right? Where they they started making mathematical models of the workloads, mm -hmm. right? And you can run them, and kind of something similar would be great for for this too. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if we I mean, if you get someone gets the experimentation set up correctly, mm -hmm. and, and the other other people verify it, like then we can agree on common set uh, instead of everyone doing it because benchmarking is very very hard to get right. I think that uh, if you're talking about something FTL under SSD, it's not FTL anymore. I I would think of it like yeah. I mean, if you map blocks to if you do an indirection, it's, like, it's not logical it's to physical, it's logical table. to zone, right? Like it's a, yeah. All right, you can call it something else. That happens. Um, I have the best word I found for it. Um, with regards to those two questions, um, I think, so I, um, from DigitalOcean, we do, um, we're a cloud provider, so I don't think this work might apply, um, but uh, I'm trying to kind of figure out how uh, virtualized load fit within like the ZNS that's coming up, and it, you've had already two talks, maybe you have a third one. <laughs> I'm <then. laughs> for the cloud, right? I think that might be future talk that I'm not working on that. We, we're working on figuring that out. Uh, but uh, no, no slides for that yet. Yeah. But we can, we can talk. 
All right. Yeah. Thank, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you.